Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи! Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Shanka Show, stories about life in the Soviet Union. In the recent video, I shared with you my recollections about the dark days of November 1982, exactly 40 years ago, when Leonid Brezhnev passed away. And in today's video, we're going to look at what was done in order to perpetuate the memory of Leonid Ilyich Brezhnev. That's a tough word right there, perpetuate. But before we start talking about memory perpetuation of Leonid Brezhnev, let's take a look what was done to perpetuate the memory of Iosif Stalin, because Stalin was at power for almost 30 years, from 1924 till 1953, while Leonid Brezhnev was running the country for 18 years between 1964 and 1982. As you may know, I grew up in the Soviet Union, I went to school in the Soviet Union, I attended college in the Soviet Union, and still I had no idea that for a long time Comrade Stalin was chilling, I don't know if it's a proper way to say it, in the mausoleum next to Vladimir Lenin for quite a long time, between March 1953 when he passed away all the way to October 1961, the mausoleum contained two bodies, Lenin and Stalin, and mausoleum had uh, two names, Lenin and Stalin. In a couple of minutes, we'll go through the long list of many items that were done in order to perpetuate the memory of Leonid Brezhnev, but only one thing wasn't done, his body was never placed into mausoleum. But we had a really good joke about, actually, Leonid Brezhnev wishing to be in the mausoleum. And I know it's kind of like unthankful business to try to share jokes with you because they just don't work really well and uh, our punchlines just don't match <laughs> American sense of humor, but I will try. So the joke about Leonid Brezhnev and mausoleum. In order to understand this joke, you need to know that the name Leonid, which Brezhnev had, his first name was Leonid, had a short form of Lonya. So just like Richard is Dick, Leonid, in Russian language, if it's an informal kind of way to talk to the person, you just call him Lonya, L-Y-O-N-Y-A, Lonya. And if something belongs to Lonya, it will be called Lonin, Lonin. So here's the joke. So Leonid Brezhnev decided that he wants to have his own personal mausoleum and he wanted to have it pretty quick because he didn't feel good. So what was done? At night, people attached two little dots on the top of the existing Lenin's mausoleum and turned it into Lenin mausoleum. So from Lenin, it went to Lenin. Quick, cheap, and easy. <laughs> and now let's take a look at this resolution on perpetuating the memory of Leonid Ilyich Brezhnev. Taking into account the historical merits of the faithful successor of great cause of Lenin, an outstanding figure in the Communist Party and the Soviet state, the international communist and the workers' movement, the ardent fighter for peace and communism, Leonid Ilyich Brezhnev, and in order to perpetuate his memory, the Central Committee comedy of the CPSU, the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet of the USSR, and the Council of Ministers of the USSR issued a resolution. But before we go down the list, I want to point something out. So they mention in that Leonid Brezhnev was outstanding figure and ardent fighter for communism, which is a bold lie. During the Brezhnev era, it was a new term invented, developed socialism, развитой социализм, and that pretty much kind of put a stop for, okay, we need to keep on going towards the communism, like Nikita Khrushchev was trying to do. He was trying to establish communism by 1980, and the Brezhnev it was decided, yeah, you know what, we achieved this new level of socialism that called developed socialism, we're going to just kind of like, a, you know, put our economy in the cruise control and just cruise along. We're not going to push hard and go, go next level to the communism. So he wasn't an ardent fighter for communism. And now back to the list. Number one, to rename a city Nabirizhne Chilne 
into the city named Brezhnev. And it's interesting situation there because Leonid Brezhnev had nothing to do with Nabirzhnaya Chilny. He never lived there. He never even visited the city. So a lot of people were not happy about this renaming. And the name Brezhnev remained for only six years. In 1988, they collected enough signatures of uh, people who lived in that city and it was renamed back to Nabirzhnaya Chilny. But uh, during the Brezhnev era, they built a huge factory, truck factory in Nabirzhnaya Chilny called Kamaz. And it was done once again by purchasing equipment, hiring uh, specialists from the United States and Italy, Great Britain, I believe. So there was American equipment, uh, technology, diesel engines, everything else. And it became like a really big deal, big construction project during the Brezhnev era. So that's why they decided to give name of Brezhnev to that town. Number two, in city of Moscow, the Chiromushkinsky district must be renamed into Brezhnevsky district. And it lasted also for six years. In 1988, it was renamed back to Chiromushkinsky district. In Dnepradzinsk, that's the city in Soviet Ukraine, the Zavadskoy district must be renamed into Brezhnevsky district. Now, Dnepradzerzhensk, it's where Leonid Brezhnev was born. So, it's interesting that they didn't rename the whole city into Brezhnev, just the one district. But it was already renamed uh, back in 1936 after Dzerzhinsky. So, I guess they decided it's too much to rename one Soviet name into another Soviet name. So, they only went for the small district. And, by the way, since 2016... Dnepradzerzhinsk uh, is named again Kamenskaya, its original name before 1936. Also, the name of Leonid Brezhnev was given to Askolsky Elektrometallurgiyski Kombinat. So that's like electrical metallurgy factory. So they were using electricity to um, melt steel, make steel. And that factory was uh, built during the uh, Brezhnev era. It started in 1974. So it got the name of Brezhnev and they had it for 10 years between 1982 and 1992. And that factory is located in Belgrade region, Russia. Also name of Leonid Brezhnev was given to Yuzhmash, southern machine building plant located at Dnipropetrovsk, currently Dnipro, Soviet Ukraine. I don't know why Brezhnev, I didn't find anything that Brezhnev was related to that uh, plant, to that factory. What's interesting about that uh, factory, it was producing around 120 ICBMs a year, so that intercontinental ballistic missiles, and meanwhile has also produced a lot of tractors. <laughs> Cement factory in Novorossiysk also got the name of Leonid Brezhnev. But Novorossiysk was kind of a big deal. That's what the uh, military... History of Leonid Brezhnev relates to Malaya Zimlya. They wrote books, then made it so famous during Leonid Brezhnev times that sounded like Malaya Zimlya, that small kind of skirmish on the shores of Black Sea that was more important than Stalingrad battle. And the list of factories and other industrial places goes on. You got Volgodonsk, Atamash, so that's a factory producing equipment for nuclear power production. You got hydropower plant Nurekskaya gas in Tajikistan. You got Savhoz, so that Soviet collective farm in Kustanaisk region, Kazakhstan. You have another Kalhoz collective farm, Vyatsanova, in Moldova. So Brezhnev was a party leader of Moldova for a while. He participated in uh, plowing and planting wheat on the new fields in Kazakhstan. So, you know, you can kind of trace uh, his work career, communist career through this renaming. The name of Leonid Brezhnev also was given to Metallurgic College in Dnepropetrovsk, where uh, Brezhnev worked for a long time. It was given to Zvezdny Garadok in Moscow region. So that was a closed city where the space industry was working. So Zvezdny Garadok can be translated like a star city, but it became Brezhnev city. The nuclear icebreaker Arctica also received the name of Leonid Brezhnev for four years between 1982 
in 1886. And it was interesting, that was done by mistake. Originally, it was planned to give a Brezhnev name to a new icebreaker was still under construction, but somehow it got messed up and existing nuclear icebreaker got the name Brezhnev. So uh, Arctica was renamed to Brezhnev and in 1986 it was renamed back to Arctica. Military college in Sverdlovsk received Brezhnev name in 1988. Training tank division where Leonid Brezhnev served back in the 30s got Brezhnev name. Middle school number one in Dnepropetrovsk where I guess Brezhnev attended also got his name. In Moscow, Kiev, Leningrad, Almata, and Dnepropetrovsk supposed to give name of Leonid Brezhnev of one of the squares and I looked it up. In Kiev we used to have a square called Uritsky Square which used to be a Soviet leader back in the 30s. It was named Brezhnev for a while and then the original name Solomenskaya Ploshchit Slominska Square was returned, and I bet the other cities, Moscow, Almaty, and so on, also renamed back to original names. A Soviet Navy ship must receive a name of Leonid Brezhnev, and this is very interesting. So this ship, and I think I already mentioned in my previous video, was the only Soviet air carrier. So originally you had a name Riga, after the capital of Latvia, then it was renamed Brezhnev, between 1982 and 1987, then it was renamed Tbilisi, the capital of Georgia, and when it was finally ready and was finished building in 1990, it was renamed after Admiral Kuznetsov. And currently, it's a part of the Russian Navy. I think it's being repaired, and it's Admiral Kuznetsov now. But he went through four different names: Riga, Brezhnev, Tbilisi, Kuznetsov. A passenger cruise ship also must receive a name of Leonid Brezhnev, so they found a ship called Karelia, renamed it to Brezhnev, and back in 1988 they renamed it back into Karelia, just like a yo-yo. The Soviet government also established 12 Brezhnev stipends for the college students, for specific colleges. One was Moscow State University, one was Metallurgical Institute in Dnepropetrovsk, as well as also Industrial Institute in Dnepro-Dzerzhinsk. I'm not sure for how long they had those stipends. Several memorialne pamiętne doski were installed. So there's like memorial memory boards. So it's the sign that says this is where such and such person worked or lived. So they ordered to install those at the metallurgical factory where Brezhnev worked, at the Industrial Institute where Brezhnev studied, and on the in Moscow on the Kutuzovsky Prospect number 26, where Brezhnev used to live. And the last order was to install the monument on the grave of Leonid Ilyich Brezhnev on the Red Square next to the Kremlin Wall. And we finally came to the end of this document, of this resolution of Yekovechevini Pamiti Leonida Ilyicha Brezhneva. Well, my friends, if you made it all the way to this part of the video, I need to give a like to you. But of course, if you like the video, you can always like it and share with your friends. And let's talk about next guy, Yuri Andropov, who passed away in February of 1984 and who also received this long resolution about making his memory last forever. No, I'm kidding. But he also got a city renamed after him. Rybinsk was renamed into Andropov until 1989. There is some areas in Stavropol region were named to Andropovsky, and it's still Andropovsky. Factories, military facilities, ships, and stuff like that. So that was Brezhnev 2.0, but was done for Andropov. Are we there yet? Not yet. We still have Konstantin Ustinovich Chernenka, the final participant of the coffin race, who passed away in March of 1985, and guess what? He got his own list of bunch of renamings, but I believe that Gorbachev put stop to it. So while resolution was issued, the towns were never renamed into Chernenka, but I believe they wanted to rename Pienza, the Russian town of Pienza, 
into Chernyanka, but it never happened. So I find quite curious this tradition of renaming cities after dead leaders. And it began with Vladimir Lenin just four days after his death back in 1924. Petrograd was renamed into Leningrad. I couldn't find any resolutions about memory of Stalin, but we all know that Stalingrad existed even before Stalin passed away, because during the World War II there was already a battle for Stalingrad, so Stalin didn't have to die to have a city named after him. And we had two leaders that got screwed. We got Nikita Khrushchev, who was removed by Leonid Brezhnev, and he got none. And of course we had Mikhail Gorbachev that had his country snatched like a rug under his feet, and he got none too. So the curious traditions about renaming cities and factories, I'm thinking now about modern Russia and its new lifetime leader, Vladimir Putin, what kind of resolution will come out when he finally passes away. Okay, my friends, I thought I have for today. I apologize, this is kind of a long video, but I thought those uh, details kind of interesting. So if you like it, please don't forget to like it. I love to read your comments, so please comment below this video, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания, goodbye. Sergey uh, wrote a book based on diaries he made when he was first in the United States. And I, as I understand, this is just volume one, right? That's correct. He's going to have more, multiple volumes coming out. Well, I said, well, since uh, Sergey is kind enough to come up and speak with us, I bought the book. I said, I might as well read this. I read this in one sitting, two hours, two and a half hours. I just couldn't put it down. It was so fascinating because uh, your writing is very compelling, for one. And his story is very interesting, for two. It's really interesting. You know, we've lived here our whole lives. We don't have that perspective. It's just so interesting to hear someone else's perspective about what we take for granted. So I hope you really tune in and, and listen to what he has to say. It's a very interesting, very informed perspective. Sergey is not a historian. He's an electrical engineer by trade, but I find that he has a depth of understanding on history, economics, culture. So just a, just a very observant fellow and a, a great storyteller. So uh, let's...